Hey everyone, we're back. Last episode we fought this dude and ended the hippie war. And now we have the ability to observe the island now that everything's changed. So, got a big peaceful metal. The hippie camp, bomb back to the Stone Age. Uh, we got drunks, we got ducks again. Um, we got the hippie store. Lighthouse. Get a massage. How about you guys? Wanted through the frat house. Cross paths with a harried looking frat boy. Hey, bro, what's up, brah? Tickets for the next party, brah. Oh, everything's gone back to normal, I think. Yeah, I think it has. I think that's everything, right? Good job, adventurer. You've finally rid the island of those smelly hippies. The tourist trade is going to boom without them sticking up the place. If only we could do something about the frat boys. At least they make good margaritas. Here you go. You're a dedicated, wo decorated war hero. Don't let it go to your head. Got the copper alpha of sincerity. And now, this is the final quest of the game. Adventurer, we see where the naughty sorcerer is holding a contest. We don't know what it means, but we know it doesn't mean anything good, and as such, we've decided it's time for you to embark on your final quest. So you can destroy the naughty sorceress who's plagued these lands for so long and refu king, rescue King Ralph Nine, who she's imprisoned. Imprisoned. Go forth to Alea, Alea, east of the nearby plains. Beat her down. This is the last quest in the game, so... We're gonna put on the Seal Slayer. Actually, no, wait. Is this... You're already wearing Seal Slayer. Okay, well, let's take this off. And you know what? Let's actually just put on my toughest shit. Because, you know, why not? Copper, yeah. Medal was awarded to you by the Council of Loathing for starting and finishing a war between the orcs and hippies. All attributes plus 11 and 5% more item drops. It's worth 5,000 meat, though, which is pretty, pretty, pretty kick-ass. And the frozen seal spot. Let's take a look at this, actually. What's the best? Seal spine is 14 to 28. Pipe is uh, much better. Yeah, sorry. Let's put those on because those are better. I mean, yeah, it's almost unfortunate that I can't really get much better stuff than what I already have. So we can go here now. We finally unlock this area. But we could also go here. And to be frank, I'm kind of torn. I do want to show everything in this game, but on the other hand, I don't want to do this quest. And you know what else? I don't have to. I could actually just buy a whole bunch of booze and then never ever play this game again. And uh, I'm going to buy a bunch of booze for, for serious. But... I'm going to beat this game by going here. Of course, it's not going to be that easy. This is also a long-ass quest. Test your mind and also other things. You survey the crowd of gathered adventurers as you approach the res reg registration desk, or the registration folding table, as the case may be. So cheap. Hello, says the officious man behind the folding table. You're here for the contest, I presume. So, he continues. The way this works, I evaluate... Uh, Evaluate you to determine your starting place in each contest, then you go wait in line for the contest to start. You get one shot at each evaluation, so make sure you wear extra cologne or whatever it is you do to prepare for these things. And I feel pessimistic about all of these. Well, let's leave for now. 
And these are the ultra, ultra cannon quests. Oh, yeah. Nutty Sorceress quest. Okay. Fast it is. I need 400% Jesus. Or 600 muscle. Jesus. Well, if I were to get 300 muscle and then double that, I could do that relatively easily. When a player registers, they will be assessed and ranked between 11 and 2 based on the stat test. Uh, you must fight a crowd of adventurers and beat the number one. Players ranked 11 will fight through adventures 1 through 12. So we'll only have to fight one. Interesting. Very interesting, in fact. Let's go back here and see exactly what they're measuring. Fastest, smartest, and spookiest. Hmm. Don't read that. That's spoilers. A hundred spook damage. Hmm. Let's see about that, shall we? Very unfortunate that that's what I'm... Oh, well, I could put these on. That's only plus 10%, though. That's another plus 10%. That's spooky damage. Hmm. Let me see. Wait, can I? Well, let me take these off. Boom, boom. And let's put on some of my combat initiative stuff. Twenty feather, right? No. Oh lord, I would love a here we go, plus twenty five. Let's take that off because I think I saw another one. Loafers, here we go. It's another plus ten. Let's take a look here. I think that's really everything. I mean, plus 45% is pretty good. Of course, I need 400%, but one-tenth of the way there is all right, right? And pulls out a stopwatch and a pair of calipers, looks at you for a couple seconds, and says, according to my evaluation, you qualify to start at rank 11 in the fastest adventurer contest. Hmm. Wait, can I just enter these? Man wraps a measuring tape around various parts of your body and declares you're qualified to begin the contest at 11. Magnifying glass and writes 11. Well... Not bad. Let's get all of this shit off. And then let's put on whatever I had on before that, which I have already forgotten. I think it was you. It was my big dumb damn quest shit, right? The copper. Yeah, here we go. Hmm. Hmm. You've entered the fastest adventure contest. Go get in line and wait for it to start. There are 10 adventures. Okay, yeah, so we just got to go fight them, huh? You're fighting a microwave, a microwave magus. A man sitting on top of a microwave. You tend to ask him where the line for the fastest adventure is, but you decide to ask him why he's sitting on a microwave. As you approach, he springs to his feet. My meditation was not to be disturbed. Sorry, I just... You begin, but you're interrupted by a series of beeps. Hi, says the reader of the microwave as it rises to the air and begins to hover next to him. So that's friendly. We kick the shit out of him. Uh, another one. And another one. Microwave beeps and plays a tort of hot popcorn at your arm. His trusty microwave darts in front of him, preventing you from attacking. It dings, its door opens, and a baked potato falls out. Interesting. You're fighting a metaphysical gastronomist. 
approach a balding man with glasses next to a chalkboard. Figuring he's a good person asks about the smartest adventure contacts. Did you know, he says, you can make your own chili powder with a common household coffee grinder? Uh, no, you say. <laughs> As he throws a handful of chili powder into your eyes. Hey, did you know, he asks, in addition to being a delicious healthy snack, olives can be used as a deadly weapon? Bonk. You're finding an accountant barbarian. Hugely muscled shirtless man with a horn helmet and a fur loring cloth headed in the queue for what is ostensibly the kingdom's smartest adventure. Be amused by the incongruity, you tap him on the shoulder, intending to introduce yourself and find out what his deal is. When he turns around, you discover that besides the loincloth, he's wearing a pencil mustache and horn rim glasses, and his helmet has a green eye sheet on the front. Uh, hello. I calculate my odds of winning this competition will rise by 22% if I crush your skull right here now, he replies, wielding the largest two-handed account ledger you've ever seen. You're fighting a kleptobrainiac. Hey, you say to the speckled teenager lording, lording near the tower. So what's sort of the smartest adventure contest is? If you, were, if you had a chance, you'd already know. Hey now, there's no reason to be insulting. You had an ounce of brains, you stopped me from stealing a watch. He grinned smugly. Okay, that tears it. I'm going to knock an ounce of brain out of your ears. Too bad I couldn't have been the strongest adventurer. I think that's everyone. Can we see how much we... Crowd of adventurers. Okay, let's take a look here. Cheetah man, huh? Okay, so we've there's a couple that we didn't see here. So let's see if we can go get those. Cheetah man, there it is. He turns around faster than we've ever seen anyone turn around. His green eyes, with so, like pupils, consider you from among the spots on the orange furry face. His ears perk up and rotate towards you. Heard about these guys. Human cheetah hybrids. They, gr they gain strength and speed, but lose their ability to not act like a cat. Now you've startled him. He's acting like a startled cat. <laughs> Kung Fu Hustler. Are you for the uh, fast adventure or contest or whatever? He asks the guy in front of you. Jerks around a face with the yell and spins a pool cue around with such speed it seems like he'd be in danger of helicoptering away. Do you request of me a challenge? He shouts, barking at the word so fast his lips can't keep up. We beat the shit out of him. Microwaveman. Come on, give me the cool one. Cheetahman. Cheetahman extends a single claw and rips you open from nipple to ear. Tasmanian Dervish. Oh boy. Last thing between you and the fast adventure in title is this thing. This, huh. What is this thing? You ask an adventurer in one of the other crowds. Don't you mean this guy? Wait, don't you mean who is this guy? Right, that's what I thought you meant. That's what I meant you meant. And he's a Tasmanian Dervish. His father was a whirling dervish and his mother Tasmanian Devil. How do they... Your sentence is cut off by the Dervish's sword. Probably just as well. A sword whips out of the whirlwind, moving too fast to see, but not too fast to slice open your shoulder. Hand whips out of the whirlwind, slaps you 30 or 40 times in the face, adding injury to injury to injury to injury to injury to injury. And that happens again. Bonk. As the last limb, maybe you should head back to the desk. Can I just get in? Huh. You enter the fastest adventure contest. You should get in line and wait for it to start. My clipboard says you're the only adventurer who entered. That can't be right, can it? Well, that's true. I guess you're definitely going to win. Let's take a look at these. You're fighting a bat burglar. Caped adventurer from behind and ask if this is the line for the spookiest adventure. He rolls around he's wearing a cowl that is, covers most of his face on top of ca fake cat ears. They're bat ears, he corrects you. I'm a bat burglar. Tell your friends. How do you know I thought that they were cat ears, you ask? I didn't say anything out loud. Sonar. It doesn't make any sense, you reply to no one because he's gone. You feel a tap on your shoulder and roll around to find him hanging upside down behind you. I hit the hell out of him. You're fighting a ghost puncher. A woman in a j gray drum suit. She looks like Gina Davis, but with different color hair. Judging the cable connections on her scientific-looking backpack to a strange metal gloves as you approach. Logo on her shoulder patch appears to depict a ghost being hit with a large cartoonish boxing glove. You're a ghost puncher, you ask her? That's correct, she replies. Clicks a knob on the inside of her wrist and her gloves run up on the arcing plasma across the knuckle. Across the knuckles. Is that effective, you ask? Punching ghosts? Not just ghosts. And you quickly dive to one side as your glowing fist crackles past your ear. Bonk. A plague shelf. <laughs> you approach a cloaked adventure to see if this is the right place for the contest. Turns around to reveal one of those horrifying bird masks Dottas used to wear in times of plague. Then he pulls out a black rolling pin carved with malevolent looking arcane runes and you realize that damn it, Dusky Alfred, he's a chef, not a doctor. I mean, that's everyone, right? Hmm. 
Yep, all right. Yeah, that's pretty much everyone, so I guess I can do the rest of this off screen and I'll come back whenever. Hey, I'm back. I drank that drippy one and now I have another stat that says drippy juice. I don't know what that means. But there's only one left of everyone, so you're finding Arthur Frankenstein. Spooky Adventure Contest has come to you into you in a terrifying flesh golem, built from the stitched together limbs of dead adventurers. Wow, crazy. Didn't expect to have to fight a Frankenstein's monsters. Not call me monster, he hollers. It's rude. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Frankenstein? Me, Arthur. Mr. Frankenstein is my creator. You know, I'm of the opinion that you can consider the monster Frankenstein's son, so you can call him Frankenstein. I think his name should be Adam. At one point, he says that he ought to be thy Adam, assuming that Victor Frankenstein is God, and, you know, it's a very unsubtle story, I'll, I'll be honest. Looks like you're the last one standing in this kingdom's smartest adventure contest. There's one other remaining, but he's sitting down. <laughs> Tall, expensive leather office dress was around for being a bald man in gray suit with a scar of one eye. He's petting an extremely fluffy white cat. So, Desky Alfred, it is down to you of me, with the thinnest slice of a smile. How did you know my name? Ha ha, he says, not actually laughing, just saying the words ha ha ha. I know everything I need to know about you. I know your every move, every technique you're likely to try, and not plan accordingly. I can destroy you without lifting a finger. No. All right. Uh, survey the crowd of gathered adventurers as you approach the desk. Uh, you're here for the contest? Uh, according to my clipboard, you're the only adventurer who entered any of the contest. I guess you win. Why don't you head on to the courtyard to claim your prize? Wooden door on the front of the keep swings open with an ominous squeak. Actually, it's more annoying with anonymous. You'd think with all this bureaucracy, they'd keep a hinge oiled. I almost forgot. This is for you. He hands you a sash before sashaying into the distance, carrying his folding table and clipboard with him. World's best adventurer sash. And now we can go to the Coronation Courtyard. Well, let's take a look at what we've got. All attributes plus one. You got this sash being the best around. Apparently, the world's best adventurer only entitles you to a crappy sash made of tissue paper. And it's a quest item, so I've got to put it on. Hmm. Boo worms. Oh, do I even have to put it on? I wouldn't like to. All right. Let's head on in. March proudly in the courtyard, and instead of a fair and fair of trumpets, a shower rose and the roar of an adoring crowd, you agree with silence. You look around, this isn't even a nice courtyard. Grass is weedy and overgrown, the bushes are scraggly. Is, there, is that a skull? Before you can investigate, a shout from far above dominates your attention. Thanks, says the distant but still sultry voice, a voice you're certain belongs to the sorceress herself. Uh, you shout back, for what? For eliminating that little crowd of meddlesome adventurers. I'm sure I can find you a suitable reward here somewhere. Of course, here you go. A spherical object lands to the ground next to you, and when you turn, you see wisps of pink gas coming out. It's pretty. Pretty gas. Pretty pink gas with black spots in it. Black spots on everything now. So pretty. Sleepy. Yeah, sleep seems good. You bolt awake. Oh, God. Wow, says a nasal voice. You survived. I survived? The fog of what feels like years of sleep still mucking up your brain works. Turn around to see who you're talking to, and it turns out to be, ah, a creepy floating skull. Hey there, take it easy, boss. I'm a friend. Name's Frank. Let me be Frank, too. What the hell's going on? How did I get here, and why am I talking to a skull from New Jersey? Hey, lay out the accent, chief. I am what I am. What's going on here is you survived the trap. Normal people don't wake up from that. I only barely live myself, if you can call this living. What's this happened before? Oh, yeah, I've been watching this process for like 4,000 years. Wait a second. The council said the king was in prison right before I got here. How can the council have been here? How can the sorceress have been here for 4,000 years? Can that council? That corrupt bunch of cons is running the show? No wonder no one survives. Get to the point, Frank. Has the sorceress really been here for thousands? Well, she hasn't, she hasn't. Time's weird here, let me tell you. It gets weirder when you're 95% dead. That's not important. It's more than you're here now. And you survive more of your bits intact than I did. Maybe together we can finish the job. What job's that? Same job as always, boss. Putting out of this sorceress reign of terror. For the king. Got a good feeling about you and me. Said for years, you know. I memorize almost everything about this place. You need answers, I'm your guy. You need muscle? Uh, no, can't do it, chief. Okay, what's next? Frank bobs his head towards the hedge maze in front of you. This reminds me of Cam, the guy from the Adventure Zone. The hedge maze. Oh, boy. You step into the arch entrance on the hedge maze and face with the classic maze choice. Left to right, question old as mazes. 
Frank says, keep your hand to the left. You'll never be bereft. I don't really care. Uh, the fastest way is to head right. Hmm. That's not too bad. <laughs> Frank gasps as he ignores his vice and head down the right path. He gasps again because of the fire that sweeps down the corridor. You're lucky you survived that, Chief. Maybe listen to me next time, eh? Hmm. Just point of the maze where the path, but path butts up against a large, shallow deck of pool. Okay, we're about a third of the way through this thing. Keep it up, we'll be there in no time. If you hug the left wall here, you make it to the other side of the pool. Why not just wait across? Well, Chief would be faster at first, but you're really slow because you'd be dead. That pool's a trap. I guarantee it. Uh, go left. You got the topiary nugget. What is that? Oh. This is a uh, smallish, smallish courtyard with a duck in it. This is the 44% duck. Almost halfway through. 44% duck. Huh? Yep. Check the inscription if you don't believe me. You do, and damned if he isn't right. Hug the left wall, I'll get through this. Another day, another fork. More than halfway there, buddy. Frank, this is agonizing. I get that following the left wall will eventually get us out of the maze. But it's so boring. Oh, I'm sorry. Hate to have waited in that crappy courtyard for 4,000 freaking years only to have you show up and get bored. Maybe instead of giving you advice on how to survive this maze full of deadly friggin' traps, I should put on a one-man show or something. What are you in the mood for? Beckett? Stopping? Eh? Eh? All right, all right. Settle down. Left wall. Good, good. Keep it up, chief. Of mouse holes and manholes. 67%, baby. And look, straight corridor with no branches. So you have no option other than the far left wall. Oh, yeah, what about this manhole over here? Bet this leads to a shortcut of some sort. Tunnels are almost always shortcuts. No, no, they warned me about this manhole. Manhole, they said. More like dead manhole. They weren't funny guys, really. They're more the thinking and planning type. Maybe they were just as bad as planning as they were jokes. Maybe the manhole is the right choice. Do what the man says or good on the manhole. We are 78% of the way through this thing, Chief, so close I can taste it, or I would be able to if I had a tongue. Speaking of which, how are you talking exactly? Hey, don't worry about it. Worry about the maze. And finish it. By uh, hugging the left wall. There's a direct path from you to the exit. You can see the door at the base of the tower. 89%, 89%. A couple more steps and we're through. Look ahead and he's right. Straight shot of the door to the base of the tower. No choice to make. I think you should follow the left wall, Frank. Boss, Frank says, grinning. For once, buddy, I agree with you. After you, you say. I insist, Chief, after you. You both giggle and head through the exit at the same time. Nice. We did it. So I've been recording for seven minutes on this clip. And 15 minutes on the other one. So this is actually a good place to cut it off. Um, I've been out for it. We're very close to beating this game. And we might actually not do 50 episodes. We might cut it a little shorter than that. But we'll see. Um, so, as mentioned, I've been Alfred. This has been King of Loathing. See you guys next time. Hell yeah.